Okay. All right. Thank you, Jess. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the start of our May 10th meeting with a short prayer and a salute to our flag. Almighty God, grant us the wisdom to make those decisions that are in the best interest of all of our residents. May the Heavenly Father of us all bless those who have given the ultimate sacrifice and service to our nation. And may he watch over and protect our servicemen and women now guarding the gates of freedom. Salute to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, statement of publication, Jessica. Take notice that this regular meeting of the mayor and council being held on this 10th day of May 2021 has been advertised and posted in accordance with Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. Thank you. Roll call, please. Councilpersons Conti. Here. Delina. Here. Enriquez. Here. Mar. Here. Novak. Here. Robert. Here. And our professional, the business administrator. Present. CFO. Here. Engineer. Here. Attorney. Sure. Okay, thank you, Jess. We have no prior minutes I see on the agenda, so we will move on to our COVID-19 update, which I will keep brief. We have officially reached over our 5,000 case of COVID-19. One of the things that I have noticed, I'm sure the rest of the council are uh, is noticing as well, our numbers are trending lower, thank goodness. We're getting more days of single digits than double digits. Um, however, um, we did have just this past week another fatality to add to our list. So we do have over 90 fatalities within our borough at this time. I'm actually going to turn over to Mr. Frankel very briefly just to talk about the vaccine um, availability that we now have in front of the police department, courtesy of one of our local pharmacies. I'll ask Dan to give a quick update on that date and the times for that if he has them available. Um, at this point, I am waiting for our newest numbers of total number of vaccinated individuals within town. That continues to grow, although not quite as steady at a, as I would like. The sooner that we get more of our population vaccinated, the sooner and the faster that our um, lives here can get back to our new normal. Dan, do you have an update as far as the date regarding our vaccinations at the police department? I, I do, Mayor. Uh, this week, the date has been changed actually until tomorrow. Uh, our residents can sign up on the Parlin Pharmacy, who's our partner on their website, on their portal, and they can go to the, uh, to, uh, to the police headquarters on the outside. It will be outside in their car. Uh, of course, when they get vaccinated, they'll have to wait 15 minutes uh, at a holding area, and then they'll be vaccinated. Um, we're going to do this every week. Parlin Pharmacy is depending on the amount of vaccines they get in. But as they told me, and as you probably read in the newspaper, there seems to be more and more vaccines available. Uh, Parlin Pharmacy is very good to us. There's, you can also go to supermarkets, of course, the drugstores, um, and whatever you do. We just hope that all of you as residents uh, hope that you can find your way to get vaccinated. And if anybody has any issues with getting vaccinated, uh, they can call uh, our offices at Borough Hall and we'll be sure to try to help them. Thank Dan, you. Dan, is this, uh, do we know what, is this a, the one shot Johnson & Johnson or is it a, a two shot like a Pfizer and Moderna? They have both. Oh, okay, cool, thank you. Very good, thank you for that. I do know that there are quite a few other um, areas uh, within our town different pharmacies. I know across from the post office on Washington Road in the Quick Mart area, they're also offering vaccinations as well. And I do know that the Walgreens in town is also offering um, vaccinations as well. And I believe that they're using Pfizer, but I think a lot of it has to do with what they have available and what they um, do get in through their distribu uh, distribution abilities and, and receiving abilities. So thank you. That takes care of our COVID-19 update. As you know, Governor Murphy continues to um, 
lessen the guidelines. So hopefully by the time we move into the summer and the holiday weekends, we'll be able to just continue to enjoy the outdoors with more and more of our family, loved ones and friends. So thank you all continue to stay safe. I don't believe we have a need for executive session. Is that correct today? Yes, that's correct, uh, Mayor. Thank you very much. Let's move on to old uh, business then. I'll turn that over to Jess. We have our public hearing on the 2021 municipal budget. I just, just notice of approval and the public hearing was advertised on April 16th in the home news as well as on our website. Okay, then at this point you need me to do the open public hearing on the 2021 budget to address any res uh, any individuals from the any residents that have any questions at this time, I will open to the public for any and all questions relating strictly to our budget only. So at this point, if there's anybody from the public that wishes to speak at this point, you would press uh, star nine, I believe on your phone. And seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the public portion. I am I move that the public portion be closed and the budget adopted on roll call. Second. Roll call, please, Jess. We just need also um, and to adopt um, resolution 2021-115. So if you I'm want sorry. to include and that. And to adopt 2021-15 resolution 2021-115. I'm sorry, that we have 115. <laughs> Second. Second. Roll call, please. Council, Council Persons Delina. Yes. Conte. Yes. Enriquez. Yes. Mar. Yes. Novak. Yes. Robert. Yes. With that, okay. We'll move public on. hearing. Yes. Thank you, Jess. Okay. Public hearing on ordinance number five twenty five dash twenty one bond ordinance providing for the preparation of tax map revisions in by and for the borough of Sarville, New Jersey, appropriating 200,000, therefore and authorizing the issuance of $190,000 bonds or notes of the borough, borough for financing part of such appropriation. And at this time, I will open to the public for any and all questions regarding ordinance number 525-21. Please press star nine now if you wish to speak. Seeing none, I will uh, move over to admin and finance committee. That's Councilwoman Roberts. Mayor, I move the public hearing be closed, the ordinance adopted on second and final reading and advertised according to law. Second. Roll call, please. Councilpersons Roberts. Yes. Conte. Yes. Delina. Councilman Delina, can you hear me? To unmute, please. Oh. Yes, yeah, sorry. I have uh, my internet service is a little uh, slow. Yes. We lost them. Enriquez? Yes. Yes. Mar? Yes. Novak? Yes. Okay, public hearing on ordinance number 526-21 in ordinance amending chapter two administration to amend, amend subsection 2-64 fees and licenses of the revised general ordinances of the borough of Sarabal. At this point, I'll open to the public once again for any and all comments regarding ordinance number 526-21. Please press star nine to ask your question. Seeing nobody in the public wishing to speak, I'll entertain a motion. Councilman Roberts again. Thank you, Mayor. I move the public hearing be closed, the ordinance adopted on second and final reading, and advertised according to law. Second. Roll call. Councilpersons Roberts. Yes. Conte. Yes. Delina. Yes. Enriquez. Yes. Mar. Yes. Novak. Yes. Ordinance number 527-21 in ordinance amending chapter 26 land development subsection 26 
1105G zoning permit fee of the revised general ordinances of the borough of Sarville. At this time, I will enter. I will open to the public for any and all questions regarding ordinance number 527-21. Seeing no one from the public wishing to speak, I'll entertain a motion. Planning and Zoning Committee, Councilman Marr, please. Thank you, Mayor. I move the public hearing be closed. The ordinance adopted on second and final reading and advertised according to law. Is there a second? second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Council Persons Marr. Yes. Conti. Yes. Selena. Yes. Enriquez. Yes. Novak. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Ordinance number 528-21, an ordinance amending chapter eight, general licensing to amend subsection 8-2.18 license fees of the revised general ordinances of the borough of Sarville. At this time, I will once again open to the public for any and all questions on ordinance number 528-21. Seeing no one from the public sh public wishing to speak, I will entertain a motion. Uh, Councilman Roberts, please. Thank you again, Mayor. I move the public hearing be closed. The ordinance adopted on second and final reading and advertised according to law. Is there Thank you. Roll call, please. Council Persons Roberts. Yes. Conti. Yes. Selena. Yes. Enriquez. Yes. Mar. Yes. Novak. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. At this point, we're going to move over to our uh, resolution to rescind ordinance number 20-21. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, 2021-107. Jess, do we need a motion for that? And then uh, a second and roll call? Yes, from um, Councilwoman Mar. Yes, I move to rescind resolution 2021-107. Is there a second? second? Thank you. Roll call, please. Council Persons Marr. Yes. Conti. Yes. Selena. Yes. Enriquez. Yes. Novak. Yes. Roberts. Yes. At this point, we will now move forward to new business with the introduction of ordinance number 529-21. That is uh, an ordinance. Yes, go ahead. Yep. An ordinance amending and supplementing chapter 12 of the revised general ordinances of the borough of Sarville to amend section 12.1 state uniform construction code. Councilwoman Marr. Yes, I move the ordinance be approved on first reading, advertised according to law, and a public hearing to be held on uh, May. When's our next meeting? Is it the 24th? It's listed. May 24th, 2021. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Council Persons Mar. Yes. Conti. Yes. Selena. Yes. Enriquez. Yes. Novak. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We'll now move over to the consent agenda resolutions. At this time, I'll open to the public for any and all statements regarding consent agenda resolution items only. Please press star nine now if you have any questions. Seeing, seeing nobody from the public wishing to speak, I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda items on, and, uh, on roll call and close the public portion on roll call vote. Oh, okay. we have a hand raised. Art has his hand raised. Because oh, I'm sorry. Art, did you wish to speak on the consent agenda resolutions? Can you hear me? Yes, Art, we can hear you. You know, uh, okay. Maybe okay. I didn't know what happened with the raised hand. I kept pushing it and it didn't go up. Uh, just two items. One is on the bill list. There's something for the uh, Serval Athletic Association. And I would just request.
ask the Councilman Conti abstain from any payments there as he is on the board of directors of the SAA. And the other one was, I had a question from a resident about the cost of the bridge at Kennedy Park. Which bridge is that? Jay, would you, um, would you be able to give us a, a breakdown of that one? I forget which one it is. I know it's not the one on the, the left side. Um, I believe that one was already reconstructed. Correct. It's the one that's all the way in the back uh, near the vacant property. It's a narrow bridge. It's going to be replaced with an eight foot wide bridge. So Art, it's in the, it's in, if you drive into the park, it's in the far back right hand corner, that bridge. Okay. Thank you. Just had a question on that. Sure, Art, no okay. problem. Thank you. And, Thank and you Mayor, very much. Mayor, I'm going to uh, just instruct um, uh, Dame not to uh, vote uh, on that, uh, that resolution, just out of abundance of caution. Okay, you, uh, that's Vince you're referencing, correct? Oh, yes, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, sorry, Vince, uh, Vince, yeah. Yes, okay. Um, any, <laughs> anybody Thank else you. from the public wish to speak? Then we will move forward. Let's redo that motion again to close the public. And sure. Thanks. I make a motion to close the public portion and adopt the consent agenda resolutions on roll call vote. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Councilperson Delina. Yes. Conte. So I would like to approve and abstain from the uh, SAA uh, line item. Okay, resolution 116. 116. I think that's yeah. what it is. Okay. Is that what it is? That's, that's right. That's okay. correct. Yep. Yes. Got it. Okay, uh, Enriquez. Yes. Mar. Yes. Novak. Yes. Roberts. Um, all except for 2021-125. Okay. Okay. Thank you all very much. We're going to then move forward with our resolution to be read in full. Jessica, that's you. Resolution number 2021-126. Resolution supporting the NJPOT construction of a new ramp and acceleration lane to replace the existing substandard loop ramp in the city of South Amboy from Route 9 northbound to Route 9 slash 35. Whereas the New Jersey Department of Transportation has proposed the replacement of the ramp and acceleration lane connecting Route, route 9 northbound with R Route 9 slash 35 located in the city of South Amboy, County of Middlesex. And whereas the NJDOT has proposed to replace the ramp and acceleration lane connecting Route 9 northbound with Route 9 and 35 while providing a sufficient detour of traffic as discussed with the proper officials and now therefore it be resolved that the borough of Saville County of Middlesex state of New Jersey support the plans for the replacement of the ramp and acceleration lane connecting Route 9 northbound with Route 9 and 35. Thank you Jess. I'm open to the public at this time for any statements uh, regarding that resolution. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion to close the public portion and adopt the resolution on roll call vote. Second. Roll call, please. Councilperson Delina. Yes. Conte. Yes. Enriquez. Yes. Mar. Yes. Novak. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Thank you once again, Jess. At this time, I'll ask the borough attorney, do we have anything to discuss at this point under your report? Only to wish all the mothers a very happy belated Mother's Day. The heart uh, of the family. Thank you very much, Mike. Yes, Mike. We will then move over to our public portion at this time. Anybody wish to speak from the public on any and all issues, please press star nine. And that was a little bit of a race. They came up pretty quick. I'm going to start with um, Tom, and I apologize if I mispronounce your last name, Fritzen. Um, please state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Thomas Fritzen. Yes, you did pronounce it correctly. Um, live 143 Main Street, Terrible, New Jersey, right down the street from Town Hall. <laughs> okay, Tom, you're in the public now, and you can ask your question or make your comment. 
A um, couple of things. Um, I've actually been in a couple of these meetings the past couple of uh, months or so, um, and I was um, inquiring about uh, trying to lower the speed limit in the section of town that I live in, in Main Street, because it's 30 miles per hour, getting very dangerous, especially when people park with their SUVs and people are trying to pull out of driveways. We've seen a couple of accidents on Main Street over the past three or four months. Um, I know I had suggested this before, uh, and they were looking into it through the county because it's the county road, unfortunately. Um, and I was wondering if anything had been accomplished and or moved on as far as that's concerned. Uh, Tom, that's a great question. I know I've been asking about a couple, two different areas. Um, do we have any update on that? And I can either, um, I don't know if it's Vince, who's our public safety um, liaison, or Dan Frankel, if you have heard uh, either one of you on that issue. Yeah, I believe Dan was checking on it since as a yeah, uh, county. I, I, I have not heard. I, I know I've, I've put in a request to the county. I have not heard anything back from the county. Uh, I can follow up also with one of the commissioners and see uh, if it's if it's on their agenda. They meet Thursday nights. But as of now, they have not given me any indication of it's on their agenda. Dan, if you would please make that follow up a call as well. Sure. And, um, I do know, like you said, Thursday is their meeting. So let's see if we can get some more pressure on them to at the very least put that in as a discussion for their Thursday night meeting. Um, I know they usually have to do evaluations on those types of things to change that. But um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fritzen is correct. He's brought this up a couple of times and I know we have as well. Also, um, I think I kicked it over Vince to you in reference to our friend Betty in trying to get over on Karcher Avenue area there, that reduced down to 15. Did you throw that over to the chief and to Sergeant Braille by any chance to look? Yeah, I did. And they actually wanted to contact her to speak about it. So okay. uh, Sergeant Braille wanted to talk with her direct. I don't have her direct info, so I'm glad you brought it up. I was hoping that you could send it over to me and I'll share it with Sergeant Braille. I will. She, she reached out to me um, just the other day as well. So I did make a phone call over to her, but we just haven't uh, touched base yet. But I'm sure she wouldn't have an issue with us, with me sharing that information with you as well. So we can hopefully have a, a conversation with all parties involved. Yeah, so he was, he was uh, you. thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. You got it. Thank you for looking into that for me. Tom, mm -hmm. anything else? I think we, there he is. He's still there. Is there yeah, anything I'm still else? here. So Tom, um, we're going to start uh, squeaking a lot louder. And Dan did send that already over to the county once, but Thursday is their meeting. So if you heard, we're going to try and push a little bit harder on that as well. Okay. Um, the other thing Mayor, I also asked for. Uh, um, Mary, can I, Dan, can can I just make a suggestion, if, if I may? Uh, because it's out of our purview, um, and Tom, because you've been very diligent about calling us on Monday nights, um, I believe that the commissioners of the county's meeting is also a um, remote meeting. So that's also a call in meeting. And because it's in their purview, uh, if we're not getting any satisfaction, maybe by Wednesday, uh, that might be something for you to call in on Thursday for. Okay. Would there be a link to that meeting and all that stuff or where I would get that information so I can uh, jump into that meeting? Nope. Would be on Middlesex County's website, just like it would. You look at our website for our our information, and okay. it would be conduct would be conducted just like our meeting is conducted. Okay. Tom, if you have any problems getting that contact information, you can send me an email or send uh, Dan an email as well, and we'll make sure that you get that. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, you had something else. Go ahead. Yeah, my other, I had asked before is, um, as we would like to drop the speed limit to 25 here in this section of town on Main Street, we also need to see, I think, a little bit more enforcement by the police of the speed limit that is there because nobody travels 30 miles per hour up and down this road. And I will be honest, occasionally I do approach the over 30 the speed limit myself, but at night, um, Later on in the night, we get cars that are ripping up and down this section of town and doing a lot more than 30. And I kind of asked for a little bit more of a police presence. Um, 
and an example of this is um, Saturday afternoon, I, the house that's next to me has a fire hydrant. There was a car parked in front of that fire hydrant for close to three hours. And I can't believe that there was no police at any point that would drive up and down Main Street that wouldn't have seen that. <laughs> so, you know, it seems like there's a huge gap. In, and I, I think it would help, not even if they want to pull people over or write tickets, just the presence to be seen somewhere on Main Street that might slow some of these people down. I know a lot of kids are riding up and down the streets really fast. And it's getting kind of dangerous. I, I feel it's getting dangerous, especially if you're trying to pull out and you have cars parked on the street, you can't see over some of these minivans or these um, other, you know, assault vehicles they have out there, I like to call them. I mean, I, have, I myself have a Jeep. I have a Jeep Wrangler that's on pretty big wheels and I still can't see over some of these cars to pull out or back out of my driveway. And I just feel that we're gonna see a major accident on this road. So I'm just, another thing I was asking for. And I know they were gonna look into that also, I think, because I mentioned that in the past. Yeah, I will, I will pass that along to Sergeant Braille too. Um, you know, he's, he's pretty good about uh, spreading the word to the supervisors and increasing the police presence. Let me, um, let me reiterate for him, because I know we've spoken about it already. Um, and I'm sure his guys have been out there, but, you know, I'm going to relay some of the specifics that you said too, and see, um, see what his thoughts are and, and have him get some more people out there. It's, and when the summertime comes and I mean, you can hear it. I mean, I, I, you don't even have to be in, I could sit on my front porch and I can hear somebody speeding miles away with these engines that they have now and the backfiring piece of it also, which is really a nuisance, but I, I know there's another road I'd have to go down and figure that out. But the, the speed is what I'm concerned about. Uh, you know, yes, the backfiring engines are annoying, but the speed is what I'm scared of. Understood, Tom. Um, likewise, I, I agree with you. And I know Main Street is um, definitely been getting a lot of attention lately with the cars. I know I can hear them as well, but uh, I do know it happens in other areas of our town as well. Vince, have that conversation yet again. Um, and I know, like you said, Sergeant Braille's very good at setting up where we have some hot spots. Mary, did you wish to add something? Yes, Vic, uh, Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to say that, you know, I know that there's, I, I know at night, they have a tendency to really get fast. But during the day, when those kids are, we have a school on that street, and they, every child must cross across the street from the parking lot. And people go, go too darn fast down there. So I, I would be very much in favor of blowing that to at least 25. And the more, the more enforcement we get, the better for the safety of the children and the rest. Thank you. Yeah, I'm with you on that, Mayor, 100%. Thank you. Tom, I think you're hearing almost a complete consensus here from the council. So um, definitely you can check back in with us, but um, definitely, definitely get your voice heard um, at the county level as well, since at the end of the day, they're the ones that really have that jurisdiction over that road. And it probably wouldn't hurt to have a couple of extra people reiterate that to them as well. So um, share that number with a few of your fellow uh, neighbors as well. Sure. Thanks, Tom. Anything else, Tom? Um, no, I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much then. Um, I'm going to go over again to Art. I see your hand is up. So Mr. Rittenhouse, name and address. Hi, Arthur Rittenhouse, 33 Delicat Lane, Sarahville, New Jersey. Um, just one quick item. I missed the last council meeting. The council meeting before Councilwoman Roberts mentioned the Democratic Chair Tom Polando had called her and wanted to know or instructed her, she's supposed to go through him about any appointments. And I understand Mr. DuPont was supposed to uh, get back on that, but I just don't understand how a non-elected official can call one of our council people and tell them that they can't go to the mayor or other council people with suggestions for appointments. That's absolutely wrong and it, it should not be allowed to happen. That's basically it. Thank you. Thanks, Art. And uh, Councilwoman Roberts, as I stated at that other meeting, um, 
I'm always grateful and happy when uh, Councilwoman Roberts calls or anybody from the council calls. So um, I think that she made the right call. Um, I can't speak for what other individuals do, but um, like I said, and I also gave my support for that inquiry. Um, and I said it publicly as well in reference to the appointment of uh, uh, Rosetta Fisher. So, and that hasn't changed. So Councilwoman Roberts, that still hasn't changed for me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate it. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. Yes, it's fun. We, we, do, we do have a tendency to laugh a lot and then we get back to business. <laughs> yes, thank you. Very good. Thank you, Art. Anybody else have anything um, to add from the public? If not, I will end up. Oh, let's see. I have a telephone number here. The last four digits are 1482. You are in the public portion. Please state your name and address for the record. So that's the individual calling in from 1482. Just make sure that you unmute yourself so that we can hear you. You were unmuted for a second, but I think you're muted again. There you go. Okay, I think I'm here now, correct? Yes, you're here now. Oh, so sorry. I didn't realize my daughter muted the regular phone. She thought you could hear me a few <laughs> earlier. Um, this is Karen Biebert from 9 Burlington Road. Uh, I just want to say good evening, Mayor and Council. And a group of a couple of citizens in our town, residents, um, some younger people had uh, endeavored to go on a garbage collection tour down the ends of um, – Lakeview Drive a couple of weeks ago. Um, from that stemmed a bunch of uh, people, uh, residents that were interested in uh, doing just some nice things around Cerebral. So we formed a Facebook group called Cerebral Cares. Um, we are going to be at behind the high school doing the Black Pass this Saturday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and would like to invite anyone, the mayor and council, or anyone listening, or we have a, a you know public event set up for it to come and assist. We're just asking if people can bring a contractor bag or two, and of course their gloves um, and whatever weed, uh, insect, or whatever repellent if needed for themselves. But we were wondering if we could perhaps get a pickup from the borough of garbage. Um, I don't know if it's actually Board of Ed property, the Black Path there. Um, I just have to also mention that uh, in my travels around town, things are really shaping up on the sides of the roads and everything. I'm sure all the departments have been collectively working to do that, and we seem to have more than normal after our winter snow pile up. But um, so we just, you know, wanted to make our effort and contribution into uh, helping. So I, again, I don't know if it's borough property or board of ed property. And the only other thing I would ask is if maybe we could leave the garbage at the base of the path there, where it's kind of like the bus terminal where the school buses park. And if we could get maybe the garbage picked up. Thank you, Karen. And yes, I did hear about, I'm so excited, the Cerebral Cares Group. I saw some of the areas that they were, and when I heard that they were heading over to the Black Path, which happens to be an area that um, I see often, and definitely bring more than one bag. I'm quite certain. Well, we're that, asking everyone to bring, you know, yeah. a couple. So, you no, know, that's what I'm saying. Each show. person can probably yeah. bring an entire, uh, because that area is, um, it, it's actually utilized a lot, but it's just an area that has a, has a tendency to collect a lot of, uh, a lot of trash. Um, Dan, can you look into that? Because I would hate to see the volunteers having to trek that push that garbage into their vehicles and their cars. I do believe that's probably board of ed property, but I could be wrong. I'm not a hundred percent sure and certain on that, but Dan, if there is a way that we could turn around and pick that up, or maybe we can uh, call to the board of ed. I don't know if they have dumpsters right back there. I know that the bus depot is very close to the end, but I don't know if they have any dumpsters over there it would probably be close to the back end, maybe by the cafeteria. So at least that's not being um, just yeah. left on the side and these nice volunteers having to, to really discard that on their own. So would you take care of that for me, Dan? Sure. I, I would probably recommend then at the end of the path, uh, probably where the blacktop begins uh, is probably a good place to, to leave it. And uh, if there's any problems, I'll let you know, Mayor, about uh, if we can collect that on uh, next Monday. 
Because well, but one of the things I'd be I want to make sure of because the top of the Black Path, which goes into Laurel Park over on Kendall Drive, there's two houses that are right next to that Black Path. So um, I wouldn't want to have a lot of garbage there piled up for those residents to look at until Monday. So maybe we can either um, work on having maybe the the group either leave by the bus depot. Like I said, double check with the board of ed. I know their dumpsters are towards the back of the cafeteria, which isn't too far away. Um, but someplace where the residents aren't going to have to look at piles of garbage. Kids do use that path for like walking and for biking. So I wouldn't want anything there to obstruct. So we just work it out so that it's safe and not um, something that becomes too, um, you know, nasty to look at for two days. Okay. Yeah, that's what we figured. I think by the uh, by the bus thing, there would be out of the, obviously out of the residence residence uh, eye shot up top. And you know what? Well, with more kids going back to school and returning to school and using that path, we just thought it'd be you know it's not an obvious area when you drive down the street. Um, like I said, you guys have managed to do a great job with that. But it's uh, it's just one of those little off areas that uh, the kids will hopefully appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for that, Karen. And You're welcome, uh, America, Patrick. I appreciate it, Dan. And is there, um, I'm trying to think, what's the easiest way to get in contact with somebody regarding that from Cerebral Cares, just so that they know where to leave it? Do, do we have a contact that we can reach, or do you want us to reach out to you, Karen? You can reach out to me. That's perfect. I'm one of the group administrators. So it's myself and Stephen and Jen Menkoff, a brother and sister, that both live oh. in Cerebral. Yeah. Okay. Jess, if you would just record... Um, uh, Ms. Biebert's number that I see here, so that way we can let her know um, what's been worked out. And that's this weekend, like you said. That's correct, Mayor. Thank you. Thank nine, you. Nine to one, if anybody wants to join us, we'd love to see you there. You got it. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank anybody you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Take care. Anybody else from the, count, uh, from the uh, public wish to speak? All right. So at this time, I'll entertain a motion to close the public portion. I make a motion to close the public portion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Okay. And then I'll make a, uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to move right on to our next meeting. So please rise for a salute to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Statement of publication once again, Jessica. Take notice that this agenda session meeting of the mayor and council being held on this 10th day of May 2021 has been advertised and posted in accordance with Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. Roll call, please. Councilpersons Conti. Here. Selena. Here. Enriquez. Here. Mar. Here. Novak. Here. Roberts. Here. And our professionals, the business administrator. Present. CFO. Here. Engineer. Here. Attorney. Here. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions on uh, from the council on ordinance number 529-21? Okay, moving forward then, we're gonna move on to communications and committee reports, starting with Councilman Roberts, please. Thank you, Mayor. I have an, um, no minutes to submit, but I do have an authorization for the tax collector to refund 100% for a disabled veteran tax exemption. Any objection on that? Okay, um, you can continue on with committee reports. Okay, just a, a couple of things of note. First, I'd like to let everyone know, and I will send this to our um, social media coordinator, that the Cerebral Historic Society will be holding its second night at the museum, Thursday, May 13th, 2021. It's an open house that goes from 6 to 9 p.m. This month, the museum will honor our police, fire, and EMTs, there will be special displays in the museum and a display of emergency equipment outside. The admission is free, light refreshments will be served, and all COVID-19 protocols will be followed. 
Thank you very much for that. How are the how are the attendants going with that? I hope more people are coming out now that things are starting to get a little better with COVID. How's it going, Councilman Robert? I was not able to attend the first one, but I have gotten feedback and have seen pictures that it was very well attended for the first one. This is the second of three, and I'm looking forward to attending uh, this one. And just to piggyback on that, just to say a little bit about the dedication of police, fire, and EMTs, not only here, but around the country. I just have to say, I went, I was away for a bit this week, and I was in Putnam County, Georgia, and had a really bad blowout on my tire on the side of a road that was unlit, and Deputy Woodward, Woodward from the Putnam County Sheriff's Office came by, and he changed my tire for me at 1030 at night in the pitch dark um, and that is just indicative of all our police, fire, and EMTs here and throughout the country. And I just want to say thank you to all of them. Here, here, I second that as well. I'm sure the whole council feels the same. Thank you. Thank and you. welcome back. I hope you had a nice trip. Anything else? It, there, it was lovely. Thank you. And um, one other thing, I did get a call from someone on Val Street, which is by Eddie's Grinding and by SG Ventures, which is... Stan Greaves motorcycle shop out by Raritan Street. And first they asked me about filling a pothole and before I could even make a request about it, that pothole was filled. So I just think the road department is doing a great job at that. And I'm assuming that that is part of our roads that did it. Um, but the second half of that, and Jay, I hope you might be able to help out. The other part of what they called about was that part of the road floods a lot during rains. Um, are you familiar with it? And is there anything we could do about that? Not familiar with the complaint. We could take a look at it with Public Works to see if there's anything that can be done. Okay, I appreciate that. And, and thank you for um, patching the pothole that, that solved the first problem without any effort on my part. So I appreciate it. <laughs> Look at that. See the, the road gods, that's what I'm calling them. They're the road gods. That's our, that's our road department. They find them and they fill them. Exactly. Thanks. Sometimes you ask and you receive. So it just had to be asked for. So very, very true. Anything else? No, thank you, mayor. You're thank very you. welcome. Planning and zoning councilwoman Moore, please. Good evening, mayor. I do not have any minutes or departmental reports. And as far as committee reports, I really don't have anything tonight other than thanking all of our groups that did the cleanup. Karen, I think that's a wonderful thing that you and your group are doing. I know you know firsthand how shorthanded and overworked our parks department people are, and uh, we appreciate everything that they do. I also took my son and his friend to the skate park, and I was walking around taking plastic bags out of Kennedy Park Lake and the Kennedy Park look has been looking much better, I think, in my opinion. So I think all of our guys are doing a great job. Um, in addition, our community garden, unfortunately, hit a hiccup. We have to move locations. So they are testing soil on a new location. So hopefully we should be up and running soon. We uh, did receive a grant for a, a beehive. So that's exciting. One of our many grants has been awarded. Uh, so it's hopefully giving us the momentum to um, get the job done, get finished on this community garden. Um, that's it, progress. My goodness, Councilwoman Marr. <laughs> Actually, Mr. Frankel, any update on the bus shelters? Uh, no. <laughs> As and as brief as your report was, very quick and very brief answer. <laughs> Thank you. Let us know how everything goes with that community garden. I'm looking forward to that as well. Probably wasn't necessarily a bad thing with all the rain we've had. We probably would have any, anything that was planted might have gotten swept away in the past week. So we're going to move on then to public safety. Councilman Conti, please. All right. Thanks, Mayor. <clears throat> so no minutes or departmental reports to file. We do have a, a coin toss request from Sayreville Touchdown Club in October. Uh, I'd like to approve that one. Any objection? All right, you're good. All right. And then a notice of retirement after 22 years of Adrian McGill 
um, as a clerk in the Sayreville Police Department. I, um, I believe she's going to be missed. I saw some notes on her, and it's a um, sad yet happy day for, uh, for Miss McGill. Part of me I'm does not want that. to ask for a second to receive that because I'm, <laughs> I'm excited <laughs> for her as well, but I don't want to see her go. <laughs> yeah. And I, I thank her for all of her time. I really, really don't know the, the, the paperwork, especially over the past couple of years, because she usually handles all those gun permits and everything for us. Mm -hmm. And that has been a busy job within the past uh, couple of years. So I hope she enjoys her retirement, um, much deserved and uh, yeah. a lot of time with Dave. They deserve it together. Yes. Well, the chief has the plan, a quick uh, turnaround on that. Um, so we'll hear from, uh, we'll hear about that in Dan's report uh, coming up. So to uh, fill in for the, for the work that she was doing. Great. So, Thank you. Um, as far as, as far as a couple other things, you know, listen, I, I echo what everybody else has been saying, um, you know, police and fire do a great job. I've been hearing, uh, you know, the sirens uh, go on here and there and, you know, we say a prayer when they're, when they're heading out and, you know, they do such a nice job. The police as well, keep everybody safe and keep order as best they can. Um, tough to do in a busy town and make everybody happy, but um, you know, they're very responsive in there you know, doing their part. So certainly appreciate that. And the parks, you know, people too, I use a lot of the parks around town and, you know, just going around, just driving around our town. I, it's, um, I don't know, I see a lot of nice things uh, nowadays, weather's getting warmer, things are opening up. So, you know, people are taking care of the town, which, which I like to see. Um, we did, um, we did receive information from uh, the chief, the fire chief Mercado, um, on his, the engine ladder that, um, that they'd like to replace. Uh, I know it didn't make the budget this time around. However, we're going to look at that, look at the material that he sent, the reports that he sent, um, the financials as well, and see if we do need to, uh, sneak something in, uh, at a later date and work on that. It sounds like, um, you know, we've got a, we've got a more of a safety issue on our hands. So, it's something that we did not did not have before. We have it now, and we'll get a look at that. Um, I know we shared that with uh, Councilwoman Roberts and Novak as well. So you know we'll we'll take a look at that and see what the story is, and and uh, make some recommendations on that. Um, <clears throat> one of the other things I am looking into, I don't know what it entails exactly, but the uh, the stop signs that light up, um, and I sent a note to Sergeant Braille about that. I don't know if it's maybe a, a something for Dan. I don't know how easy it is to get those in certain parts of town, but there's a few different places where I think that we might be able to benefit from that. I know um, a couple of residents have asked me about them and I, I'm looking into it. I'd like to see what it would entail. Uh, I think it would help out in certain spots around town. So hopefully, um, hopefully it's not such a difficult process and there'll be more to come and we'll see some of those slap signs lit up in, in tough spots. Uh, but I'll, you know, I'll, I'll keep you posted once I find out what it entails. Thank you for that, Councilman Conti. Anything else? That's it. Thank you very much. All right. We're going to move on to recreation. Councilman Enriquez. Thank you, Mayor. All right. I have no minutes of departmental reports. I'm looking for approvals for applications for special events received for the following. First Presbyterian Church to conduct the yard sale in the church parking lot on May 15th. 2021, 8 to 12, First Presbyterian Church to conduct a flea market in the church parking lot on September 18, 2021, from 7 to 2, uh, AATM Performing Arts to hold the dance school recital and festival on June 12, 2021, and June 13, at Veterans Field and War Memorial Park, pending all necessary approvals, and Fayetteville AA Soccer and Suburban Youth League, Soccer League, to hold a soccer tournament on June 5th from 9 to 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the Jerry Us Recreational Complex, pending all the necessary approvals. Any objection? Okay, you're good to go, Damon. Committee reports. Uh, all right, I do have some good news. Our summer camp registration is going to be opening up come Thursday, uh, 5:13. That's this Thursday. 
So if you are looking to get your children in the summer camp, Thursday's the day to sign them up. Uh, can't wait for that to start. Nice normalcy starting to begin in our town. It's a great thing and progress. All right. Thank you, Damon. That was a quick one, too. Water, <laughs> water and sewer. We're going to move over to Councilwoman Novak. Yeah, I'd just like to remind everybody that uh, we've got, we, it's uh, electronic uh, billing and payment for the, uh, with the water department is available now. And other than that, Mayor, progress. Wonderful. Very good. Let's keep moving with Public Works Council President Alina. Thank you, Mayor. Just talk about what Councilman Robert says about our road departments. They do a fantastic job. Um, our roads took a beating this winter with all the snow uh, that we had and our guys in our public works department do a fantastic job. Um, and other than that, I have progress. Wonderful, excellent. And um, very quick, I just have two announcements. Um, really the request, uh, Dan, that I need you to look into. Um, the city of South Amboy, our friends, um, the business administrator, Mr. Skarzynski reached out. They are requesting um, use of our portable stage on two dates that I just need you to look into and then reach out and let them know if that is um, okay. They have Saturday, June 19th, um, that they're looking to host a public outdoor concert with the request of our portable outdoor stage. Um, so I'm gonna give that date to you now to look into. And also they're looking at September 25th, which is also a Saturday for the, uh, a cultural, their Irish cultural festival. So um, again, that request came in from their BA, Glenn Skarzynski. Just uh, double check, see how we are. I don't know if we have any other requests that come in. These are both Saturdays. So I don't think that that will, um, the, at least the June date shouldn't interfere with any of our high school uh, graduation ceremonies or the middle school. I don't believe those dates are being used. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, help them out. And that's it for Mayor, me. Mayor, may I ask a question? I, I, it's so nice to see that South Amboy is starting to have all of these things. Is there any chance that we could work on a sayable day, even if it's a, you know, it's a scaled down version of what we used to do? The thought. I think that now that we officially have a rec director, which is exciting, um, and I know that that was uh, something that Jerry worked out a lot. I think that let's not have the young man run out the door too soon, but I do think it's something we need to start talking about, Mayor. So I'm okay. Thank with, you, Mayor. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I think now that the restrictions, a lot of restrictions that we had in place before are being lifted, at least for um, the summer months and getting close to that 4th of July weekend, maybe we can start putting some plans in place. If I can um, add, add those, I can make for a while. It takes, I know they start planning that in January. It's a laborious uh, love. So I don't know how feasible that is, knowing how much in advance they have to plan. Um, but I, but I, you know, just, just so that, you know, you understand what they're up against, but whatever they can do, I'm sure would be um, graciously accepted welcome yeah i'm listen i'm i'm open to even if it's not our cerebral day celebration but starting to bring back um some some different things perhaps the iris cultural festival versus the parade that was usually done at uh south amboy for saint patrick's day i think that they're being they're doing the uh, uh concert so i think this is an opportunity for us to take a look at maybe reinventing a couple of different things start small and then build back up to the things that we've known and we've loved and we've done. So I definitely think uh, this is on the agenda. Uh, Councilman Enriquez, were you gonna add to that? Yes, I was. Uh, when uh, Ryan first started and during our, we just had a rec board uh, meeting on Thursday, they are gonna start looking into getting back to normal and having our events again. Um, we it is being explored by the rec board and the rec director. So it is on the plate and in the words, we just got to see what we can do, what we have time to plan to do and all of that. But it, it's definitely on the radar to start doing these things. That's great to hear. May I, uh, um, maybe uh, Vinny could check with the police department and uh, see if there's 
Any plans maybe, uh, you know, the national night out also. I mean, it's an outdoor event, you know, and, it, you know, if they're looking at planning that, you know, just, you know, trying to get some normalcy back basically for our kids. I will inquire about that for sure. Very good. Thanks. It's good to have these conversations. That's the end of my report. So we're going to move over to the business administrator's report. Mr. Frankel, you're on. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, on these two discussions for South Amboy, do you want to put them on the, uh, uh, do you want to move forward on the agenda to her approval? Yes, I think that um, it would make sense. Well, I'm sorry, say that, Mayor. I was just saying as long as it's, not, we're not using it, why not? Exactly. That's why I want to just take a look at it, make sure that we're not utilizing it, make sure that it's um, we're able to get that over there and do what we normally do. And if everything's a go, then by all means, please put that on the agenda so they can move forward with their um, organization of their events as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Authorization of intent to match a grant award from the New Jersey Library Construction Bond Act in the amount of $446,240. We're going to keep moving through unless anybody has a question or comment. I do have a comment on this one, Mayor, if I may. Of course. Um, I do recall this vote going through. I was the only vote against this, and I do want to voice my objection again. $446,000 and $240 is a very big commitment to ask of our taxpayers, at, especially after a pandemic. I also want to note that we are doing a lot more remote. Um, and remote work, and that there are other facilities that were suggested at the public meeting that might be utilized for the same purpose that this um, award library construction is proposed to um, fulfill. So I do want to voice my objection once again, because it is a matching grant and it is a commitment that we will have to make in taxes or bonding. And there are other things that are a higher priority right now. In fact, we had to say um, no to a new fire engine that is necessary for a lot of the new buildings in town. So I just wanted to voice that objection. Thank you. Dan, is you the application yeah. process again? I'm sorry, could you repeat that, please? I, I think Mary was asking first, and then I'll ask my question. Mary, go ahead. I, I believe that we, uh, before this uh, application could even be presented. The town committed to these matching funds. Uh, is my recollection correct, Dan? Yes, it is. Yes, Mary, I was the only one who um, objected to it. Unfortunately, though, we the, the, the town did vote in favor to make the commitment. I don't know if we can back out now. Believe me, I, I realize that, you know, the money is tight, but sometimes when you make a commitment. I understand we, we made a commitment, but um, is there any way that we do not have to fulfill it at this time? Is there any way around it? I think the uh, argument is stronger. I think, there, I think there's a, even if we receive the grant, I believe there is a period of time to implement the grant. I don't know what that, that is. It could be one year, it could be three years. Uh, we'd have to check out the grant and see what's necessary. So, yeah, um, if I may interject, Dan, I remember we did a lot of research into this, and I don't know if Mike Dupont remembers this as well. So, this is just an intent to match in the event that we do actually get the grant. Isn't this part of the process again? Because we were originally denied the first grant, we did not actually receive it, and then this was to move forward with it. We voted again to give them the authorization to attempt to get this grant again. And I believe there's provisions within the grant that states, number one, if we have to decline the grant for any reason that we could without penalty. But I also believe that there was a number of, like you said, stipulations in there that we wouldn't be required to put up the $500,000 all in one fell swoop. I think that there was actually um, like a timeline of so much of so much this month, so many this month, you know, throughout the course of a couple of years, I believe. Am I correct in my memory? Uh, I that's that's my recollection also, but we'd have to go back and check it out. I can I can um, work, I can work with Mr. Frankel and uh, figure out what the uh, requirements of the uh, grant, uh, Mayor. 
Thank you very much. Um, Miss, uh, I'm sorry, Damon, did you also re recall that? I, I heard you want to yes, say. Yes, yes, uh, May, you were correct in that. I do recall that. I do remember talking with the library people about that. That is correct. Uh, we, when it was presented, we weren't going to have to front it all up front. Right. That's what I thought. And I'm, I'm glad my memory is starting to come back after a long battle with COVID. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself just being able to recall that. Um, I do appreciate it. So we will um, continue to look. Aside from uh, Councilwoman Roberts, does anybody else have a comment or issue with this? Okay. Hi, Mayor. Can I ask one more clarifying question that um, I, it just occurred to me hearing it again. The first submission was rejected for this matching grant. Is that correct? I believe that we did not receive that first one, but I believe a handful of meetings ago, we did authorize the library board to go again to attempt to obtain uh, the, a grant this year. If okay, I'm my, sorry, correct. Thank you for that clarification. I, yes. I, it's a very, I know that this is a very, very competitive grant. Um, many, 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 many towns um, put in for this. So it's it's quite a tedious process and i think we have one of the best grant writers around and i was um surprised at how competitive that particular grant was so i was happy to see that it was actually offered again which we didn't think that that would be uh, happening this year but it was so that was quite a surprise uh planning and zoning continuing on mr frankel uh mayor one of our council uh people have uh, asked that there's a lowering of a fee for an as is letter that is issued by the code enforcement office from 500 to 300 dollars it's uh it's under fees we have to move that forward uh as a uh, resolution moving forward i'm sorry not as a resolution as a changing of the ordinance so that's a reduction in revenues that we would be receiving um it's not necessarily revenues it also goes to the the code enforcement office uh the fees that they collect uh pay for everybody in that office so it, we would be collecting $200 less on each as is letter. But just to clarify, this is not a revenue generating ordinance. Um, the fee was proposed to deter people from uh, paying it. So it's a minimal, I think it's nine a year or something like that. The, oh. I don't have any new information to add other than other towns are charging nothing or next to nothing east brunswick zero south amboy zero south river zero old bridge 165 so i just think we should be uh you know a lot more equitable keyport is 250 howells 250 carteret's 300 edison's 300 um i just don't think 500 is uh reasonable for our residents Okay, so um, any objection from the council? You said that that money is usually used to do what with Dan? It's it, it, all the fees that are generated in in the code enforcement office goes to pay for for the all the salaries and everything in in that office and all the expenses in that office. So it's as as Councilwoman Moore said. I think last year there were nine that were issued. This is not a big okay. revenue generator, however. Um, but um, uh, Councilman Mark uh, feels that this is a, it, it's not fair to the residents who wanna, who wanna have an as is letter. Okay, I just, uh, as long as I know where it's going, does any council person have a question or comment or are we okay with that? You have to draft this up then and change our fees? We'll let uh, our attorney just uh, draft, draft the uh, change of order. I'll, I'll take care of that, Mayor. Okay. It doesn't sound like there's any objection, so we can move forward. Uh, authorization to appoint Laura Kruskowski to Record Support Technician 1 in the Police Department, effective May 17th, 2021. Authorization to advertise for receipt of bids for abandoned vehicles. Request for an ordinance to prohibit all classes of adult use cannabis license and medical marijuana facilities. Mr. Frankel, can you... Um speak to that one I'm, 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 this is the first i'm hearing about this one and uh, this came from. so i'm, I'm gonna I'm not that i'm going to defer to our to our council but we have to make some decisions and we have a a uh six I, months from the I, time i, I can cover that right. i can cover that okay Dan. 
So under the uh, local uh, cannabis legislation that was passed, the borough has until August 22nd to decide um, if and where um, cannabis retail wholesale or grow would be. Um, if you don't do anything, uh, then uh, you're not placing any restrictions in the borough. What the legal municipalities uh, is recommending and I'm recommending uh, that you uh, prohibit it um, until you have a better idea where you would like um, any of these cannabis uh, institutions. It doesn't mean that you can't change it in the future. Uh, this is simply giving you some breathing uh, room to think about where you may or you may not want to grow or retail a, a dispensary, um, a wholesale distributing. There's six licenses. So um, to give the borough and the planning board a little or the uh, planning planner a little more um, a room to make that decision, um, I'm recommending that this ordinance, uh, which has been prepared um, between myself and uh, the planner uh, be adopted uh, so that at least in the future, you can still revise this uh, to chip away if you'd like to have retail, if you'd like to have wholesale, if you'd like to have a dispensary. Um, so that's it. Okay, I don't know how uh, any of my other council um, you know, colleagues feel, but yeah, Mr. DuPont, this is something that you think we should do that I'm in agreement with you. Yeah, it just get, it gives you a little more time to, to actually plan where you may or you may not want uh, certain licenses in the town. Thank you. Understood, thank you for explaining I, that, Mike. Any questions, Mary? I, I just have one. Um, and maybe it's not even appropriate right now, but you, we could conceivably say we would permit a medical distribution place, but not permit a, a distribution for just, you know, recreational use. Correct. Is that correct or going? Correct. There, you can, okay. you can, yes. There, there are six different licenses that you can. Um, uh, it's uh, not an all or nothing is what no, I wanted to not. know. No, it's not. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Council President, and uh, thank you, Mike and Mary, as well. Uh, continuing on, Dan, does anybody else have anything else, or we can move on that? Okay, keep keep okay. going. Authorization to award a contract to Exxon Enterprise Inc. for body cameras and tasers through Sourcewell Co-op 010720 in an amount not to exceed $1,681,654.09. Okay. Any objection? No. All right. Keep going. Uh, that would be it, Mayor. Thank you. Oh, that's the end of yours. Look at that. There's no listed under any of the others. So we'll move on to our CFO's report. Um, Ms. Biancomano, please. Yes, just one item, Madam Mayor. Authorization to amend the 2021 local municipal budget for the 2021 highway safety grant in the amount of $23,100. Thank you. Thank you very much. Borough Engineer's report. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. One item, the DOT is accepting grant application for next year's round of funding for roadway and, and miscellaneous improvements. Last year, you received $475,000 for South Minnesota Avenue. So we're recommending we be authorized to submit applications for the funding. As far as which roads, we'll have to speak with Mr. Frankel and Public Works to decide, but we'd like to get that process started. The applications are due on July 1st. Absolutely. Thank you very much for that. Any questions? No. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Uh, borough, and, uh, borough attorney? Uh, no report, Mayor. Thank you. No reason for executive session at this time. So I will once again open to the public for any and all statements. Please press star nine. Seeing no additional hand raises at this time, I'll entertain a motion to close the public. I make a motion to close the public portion. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Any opposed? Then entertain a motion for adjournment. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again and have a great evening. We'll see you in a couple weeks.